Hello and thank you in advance for participating in our presentation. We are psychiatric nursing students from Stenberg College eager to share with you our knowledge and understanding of alcohol addiction. The purpose in this teaching assignment is to provide you with factual information and realistic strategies to change your thoughts and behavior of alcohol consumption. Alcohol is quite prevalent in our society. It comes across on the media as an outlet for fun, partying, and relaxation. With a show of hands, how many of you can relate to this? It's not surprising, with alcohol being the most commonly used drug in Canada. Yes, drug. Alcohol is a drug that slows down your nervous system, affecting your concentration, speech, balance, vision, coordination, judgment, and overall health. On the screen, you will see some other facts about alcohol. Suzette Glasner Edwards wrote in her book titled The Addiction Recovery Skills Workbook that addiction is a brain disease. She describes how our brains are wired to reward pleasurable experiences by producing brain chemicals known as neurotransmitters. This reaction responds to pleasant smells, taste, and touch and involves the release of dopamine. Alcohol and other drugs interfere with this process, acting similar to natural chemicals in our brain and with co-occurring use, changes the way our brain works. On the slide above, you'll see a chart that describes how alcohol affects our behavior. So when we drink alcohol, dopamine is released in abnormally large amounts where we experience euphoria, leading to a strong motivation to repeat the alcohol use. With repeated alcohol use, Dopamine production is reduced, which leads to a loss of ability to experience pleasure from alcohol or other activities that used to be enjoyable. Glutamate, a brain chemical that influences our ability to learn, is depleted and concentration is altered. Loss of cognitive abilities, including effects on memory, concentration, ability to understand information and think rationally. Frontal lobe changes are also altered. Aboriginal culture promotes that one must first look back in order to move forward. In consideration of addiction among Aboriginals, it is important to understand the relationship between addiction and post-traumatic stress syndrome related to the residential school experience and intergenerational trauma. One important thing to note about alcohol is that it is a maladaptive coping mechanism, one that is used to help a person feel better but does not equate to healthy outcomes. So let me ask you, what is alcohol addiction? What does alcohol addiction mean to you? And how have you seen it in your life? So how can we tell if we have become addicted to alcohol? Not everyone that uses alcohol becomes addicted to it. A person can misuse alcohol without their bodies becoming physically dependent on it. However, once our bodies become physically dependent on alcohol, this is the point where it can be considered an addiction. Some of the signs and symptoms that are indicators of alcohol addiction are having more than 15 drinks per week if you're a male or more than 12 drinks per week if you're a female, if you drink alone or make excuses to drink, if you have an increasing tolerance to alcohol, if you get annoyed when people inquire about your drinking habits, if you neglect your personal health and hygiene, if you miss school or work due to drinking, if you get the shakes or nauseous when you haven't had a drink, if you get cravings for alcohol, if you have blackouts or lapse in memory after a period of drinking, or if you drink for several days in a row or even every day. So how can we tell if we have become addicted to alcohol? Not everybody that uses alcohol becomes addicted to it. A person can misuse alcohol without their bodies becoming physically dependent on it. However, once our bodies have become physically dependent on alcohol, this is the point where it can be considered an addiction. Some of these signs and symptoms are indicators of an alcohol addiction. Having more than 15 drinks per week if you're a male, or more than 12 drinks per week if you're a female. Drinking alone or making excuses to drink. Having an increasing tolerance to alcohol. Getting annoyed when people inquire about your drinking habits. Neglecting your personal health and hygiene. Missing school or work due to drinking. Getting the shakes or nauseous when you haven't had a drink. Having cravings for alcohol experiencing blackouts or a lapse in memory after a period of drinking or drinking for several days in a row or every day. A 
typical assessment that's used to see if there's any indication of chemical dependency or alcohol dependency is called the CAGE assessment. There's four questions. So as I read the questions, think about it yourself and see whether or not you feel if you pertain to any of these questions. So the first question is, have you ever felt like you should cut down on your drinking? The second question, do you ever feel angry or annoyed if someone comments on your drinking? The third question is, do you ever feel guilty about your use of alcohol or how you behaved under the influence? And the last question is, do you ever use alcohol to start your day as an eye opener, drinking first thing in the morning to steady your nerves or to avoid a hangover? So if you answered no to all those questions, then there's no concern. If you answered once, it indicates the need for further assessment. So maybe something you want to talk about with your parents or with a school counselor. If you answer two responses, it indicates that you have an 80% likelihood of having a problem. And if you answer three responses, it indicates a 99% chance of chemical dependency. So most of us already know the immediate effects that alcohol has on our bodies, such as making it harder to balance or talk without slurring our words. However, alcohol has much more damaging effects to the insides of our bodies. Let's take a look at what some of these effects are. Alcohol interferes with the communication pathways in our brains, which can cause changes in our mood and behavior, affect our ability to think clearly, and affects our ability to coordinate movement. In the heart, alcohol can cause cardiomyopathy, which is a stretching or drooping of the heart muscle, arrhythmias, which are irregular heartbeats, strokes, and high blood pressure. Alcohol can cause fatty liver and other inflammation of the liver. Alcohol can also cause the pancreas to release a toxin that causes dangerous swelling and inflammation of the pancreas blood vessels, which is called pancreatitis. Alcohol also causes cancers of the mouth, esophagus, throat, liver, and breast, and it decreases our ability to fight off diseases. Okay, you all received some letters when you came in today. We are going to use them now in a short quiz that will review some of the information we have touched on so far. I'm going to ask you all five questions pertaining to alcohol. You will have four to five choices using your letters A, B, C, D, and sometimes E. Think about the question and raise the letter representing your answer. Question number one, what is alcohol? Is it A, a stimulant, B, a neurotoxin, C, a narcotic, or D, a depressant. All right, so the answer is D, a depressant, and it's B, a neurotoxin. So I didn't really tell you that you could raise more than one letter, um, but some of you did, and um, a lot of you chose uh, the correct answer, so that's great. Uh, the second question is, what factors are relevant variables of alcohol intoxication? So indicating when you're drunk. Is it A, the amount that you drink? B, the time frame? C, your tolerance? Now we are going to discuss some common myths and misconceptions around alcohol use. A common belief around alcohol use is that it's common and relatively harmless to black out or pass out from alcohol use. In reality, high dose alcohol use has detrimental consequences on our nervous system, endocrine system, and cardiovascular system, as well as has many psychiatric risks associated with it. Another common myth around alcohol use is that you can sober up from a good meal, a shower, or a cup of coffee. Eating a large meal before alcohol consumption will delay the rate of alcohol absorption. But in reality, the only thing that will sober you up is time. Another myth is that you can drink a large amount of alcohol and even out your health through exercise and diet. But the truth is that chronic alcohol use may lead to deficiencies in folate, vitamin B6, vitamin B1, niacin and vitamin B3, and vitamin A.
In reflection of myths about alcohol's social perception, there's a myth that drinking is often considered a normal part of socializing with relatively few health risks in many societies. The fact is, regular and heavy alcohol consumption can lead to complications with intoxicated behavior, but also further down the line it can contribute to the development of neurological problems such as alcohol-related psychosis or Wernicke's encephalopathy or Korsakoff syndrome. Another myth is that alcohol overconsumption or abuse in, is mainly a problem among younger or college-age individuals. The fact is, alcohol abuse does not discriminate among age. It is important to recognize that older persons are just as likely as younger persons to benefit from alcohol treatment. Growing up in Winnipeg, there is a, lot, a large large population of Aboriginal people there. It's hard to see Native people sleeping on the street and knowing from the past that, um, that there is a cycle that happens and, you know, wondering if you're going to get caught up in it or not. Both of my parents, um, they did struggle with alcoholism and um, unfortunately a lot of Native people in Winnipeg do. My father was in a residential school and I believe that the abuse that he suffered there led him to his drinking. When I was 15 I was living on my own. I had my first job and um, I met my first boyfriend. I became addicted to crystal meth when I was 16. I was addicted up until I was 20 years old. Any Aboriginal person you go up to or speak to will probably tell you that they know at least one person that they've lost to alcoholism or drugs or addiction. First losing a friend, then losing my sister, and then losing two cousins, and one aunt, and my father, and another cousin, all within the past four or five years. It happened all so quickly, and it was just like boom, 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 one after the other, that um, I didn't really know how to handle it or cope with it. So I just kind of just went to what I knew, which was um, drinking. So that's why I feel fortunate to have ended up at CAMH because there are times when I was, I was very close to going down that same path. It feels really good. It feels uh, much better. I'm happier when I wake up in the morning and um, I don't have to worry about what I regret doing last night and um, you know I see the humor more in every single day than I did before. A lot of, a lot of people drink to get away from the problem. Um, but the problem is drinking. I guess what Native people have to learn is that you can do just as much harm to yourself as others can do to you. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.
So how do we change? If we have recognized that we may or do have a problem with alcohol, the next step is to consider what stage of behavioral change we are in and what our personality tells us about our addiction. The five stages are pre-contemplation, which indicates awareness of the problem, but we remain defensive of others' concerns. The next stage is contemplation, where one thinks about change and current behavior patterns. The preparation stage indicates you are convinced that you need change and you start exploring ways to get help. The action stage indicates you are engaged with treatment modalities and the maintenance stage reflects the consistency of sticking to the changes you have made. As for your personality, there are four personality risk factors for substance abuse. Anxiety sensitivity indicates a fear of anxiety symptoms where one uses substances to manage their anxiety. Hopelessness is reflective of negative thinking and oftentimes these individuals are introverts in that they keep to themselves and are solitary drinkers. Sensation seeking is reflective of individuals who drink alcohol for the high or the buzz, otherwise termed as psychostimulant effects. Impulsivity is engaging in rewarding activities without being concerned of the long-term effects of using them. So this slide is recognizing the coping strategies that you use, representative of the stage that you're in and the personality that you have. So we have adaptive coping mechanisms and we have maladaptive coping mechanisms. Adaptive coping mechanisms are positive. They're positive reinterpretation and growth, seeking instrumental social support, reaching out, um, actively coping, thinking about how you need to cope, awareness. Uh, restraint from using substances, acceptance, suppression of competing activities, and planning. Maladaptive coping mechanisms are mental avoidance, not wanting to think about things, disengagement, so isolating yourself, focusing on inventing, um, seeking emotional support for negative emotions, negative thoughts that you continue to have, using alcohol or drugs, and denial. So let's talk about what it means to heal from alcohol addiction holistically. In our research, we continually come across the use of storytelling in Aboriginal culture. A quote we have on the slide states, our voices are our medicine, and our stories are our medicine and we're all a bundle of stories. A moment ago, we shared with you Tamara's story. How did that impact your feelings towards alcohol addiction? Does hearing a story impact your life more than hearing the facts? The rest of our presentation will focus specifically on an Aboriginal approach to recovery of alcoholism. For healing to occur, one must reflect on themselves and take responsibility for their own life and their own healing. Traditional spiritual beliefs are the very essence of Aboriginal healing. The holistic medicine wheel is an integral part of Aboriginal culture. The Aboriginal medicine wheel is a balance between all four spheres, mental or mind, which promotes individual educational success plans, course selection, guidance through programs, processes, procedures, and protocols, physical or body, which reflects to referrals to community and university-based programs, financial support, and advocacy, emotional or heart, which is empathetic and attentive listening, referrals to university and community-based services, meaningful caring relationships with advisors, and spiritual, relevant and meaningful cultural connection, referrals to spiritual cultural leaders, with the center of the wheel is learning together. All of these are important elements needed for health. People are always in a state of change. Therefore, the Aboriginal medicine wheel symbolizes motion and the need to continually focus on the process of balance. Health promotion and harm reduction models align Aboriginal cultural beliefs among effective community-based addiction intervention programs are facilities such as Round Lake Treatment Center located just outside of Vernon. 
Reclaiming spiritual-based cultural practices is a way for Aboriginals to counterbalance their addictions and rebuild healthy relationships with their culture. When a sense of identity has been lost, renewing spirituality is a key aspect on the journey to healing. These pictures represent cultural practices such as drumming circles, smudging, and sweat lodges. So do you feel like help is out of reach? In British Columbia and the Kamloops area, there are services which provide empowerment, direction, and support. The crisis phone lines connect you to an Aboriginal mental health liaison worker who is trained in mental health referrals. There are two crisis phone lines specifically for Native youth and Aboriginal youth. If you have addiction concerns or need emotional support, crisis intervention for depression, isolation, family relationship issues, grief, abuse, or any other health concerns, reach out and get help. The Youth in BC website connects you with real-time online chat with a trained volunteer, or you can get email support from the Crisis Centre's professional staff. Learn more about common issues and concerns of addiction, depression, and self-harm. Read real-life stories and connect with others. Find resources by connecting to the online library of useful websites and community resources to explore life skills and coping-related toolkits. The White Buffalo Aboriginal and Métis Society provides programs and services to advance the health and social well-being of Aboriginals. They have a website at www.whitebuffalosociety.ca and they're located at 517A Tranquil Road in Kamloops. They're open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. with Aboriginal development clinicians that provide support, information, and referrals, culturally relevant strengths, needs, assessments, plan of care, safety planning, family-focused support for children and youth, contemporary and traditional models, and recommendations. In reflection of national Aboriginal organizations, there are various resources highlighted in Canada that are geared towards the Aboriginal movement and cultural reclamation. National Aboriginal organizations play an integral component for shaping Aboriginal approach to addictions treatment by establishing bodies to help control research for social, cultural, economic, and political well-being of Aboriginals. The National Indian Brotherhood, the Native Women's Associations of Canada, Métis National Council, and the National Native Alcohol and Drug Abuse are just a few to name. These organizations have helped pave the way for culturally based healing and recovery within the Aboriginal community and reflect spiritual and philosophical themes that are central to Aboriginal traditions. The National Native Alcohol and Drug Abuse Program is a program in response to the urgent need of treatment for the use of drug and alcohol abuse in First Nations and Inuit people. This program is designed to help individuals with training, programming, placement, and implements addiction treatment services for Aboriginal people. Thank you for attending our presentation. Remember to reach out, seek help, and learn more about addiction. You can be the one to make a difference by making a change and breaking the cycle of alcohol abuse.